Hey everyone, welcome to the Fortress of Solitude podcast. I'm your host, Sergio Pereira. And today I am joined by Lois Kutab. See, I wasn't going to go do one of those massive intros to announce oh, Zack Snyder. I was so ready for it, man. Or Vin Diesel <laughs> or The Rock or whatever. Like, <laughs> It's someone better. It's Lois. Now, Lois, oh, man, how are you, you doing? Thank you. Um, I'm doing well, man. It's a, it's a good day. It's a Thursday. It's a... It's a day to chat. It's a day to get things off our chest. No, that's definitely true. And I mean, today's topic is one which I've been thinking about for a while, to be honest with you. It's, it's something which I've, I've thought about, you know, having a podcast about it. But, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that likes a lot of sensationalist sort of news. Like, right. I, I'm the sort of person where I think, you know, in terms of film journalism, it has taken a bit of a sensationalist turn. It kind of feels like TMZ at times where, you know, it's <laughs> all about spoilers and behind the scenes and, oh, this is in chaos. And, you know, this movie's like... <laughs> A little bit of clickbait, clickbait here and there. Exactly. It's become a lot of clickbait. But I've been following this topic, especially this one about, you know, Henry Cavill, you know, as Superman, you know, what is his status? I've been following it for quite a while, you know, and I've, okay. and I've decided, you know what, let me wait. Let me see a bit of the evidence. Let me see a bit of the stuff before I formulate a proper opinion on it. And that's yeah. the most important thing that I want everyone listening to understand is that this is just going to be our opinion on it. Yeah, it, it's going to be like whether it's true or not, whether he actually does stay as Superman or whether he goes like we don't know. We are not insiders of Warner Brothers. We are not going to be sitting here claiming that we have sources at Warner Brothers that told us this or that, you know, his manager contacted us via the DMs on Twitter and told us, no, 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 Henry's definitely staying or going. We don't have that yeah. information. Yeah. So we're not going to pretend and like, you know, basically lie to you guys. Here. Or do we? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're not going to do that we are just going to discuss the topic at hand and i think the most important thing is you know we all un- we all know that dc movies has gone through a bit of turmoil mm. I-, I mean we-, we know that the whole snyder cut thing it, it was I think it was a tipping point, to be honest. Like, yeah. I, th- I think, you know, Justice League was a tipping point where it affected everything. There was just like a massive domino effect and it was like, bing, 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 exactly. bing, bing. Everything like falls. You know, Ben yeah. Affleck leaves as Batman. Um, okay, well, he's returning just for the Flash movie now, but, you know, he's pretty much mm-hmm. not doing the movie anymore. And he's he's gone. The Flash movie is pretty much going to be uh, a, a way for them, I think, to, to rectify. Well, let's not say the word rectify, but to to reassemble things let's put yeah. it that way and you yeah. know obviously we've got a robert pattinson's uh, batman movie coming out as well uh there's still aquaman 2 uh, wonder woman's yeah. still going ahead so it's a little bit all, like all over the place a bit of you know joker mm-hmm. as well and, and it, look it's it's nice in the sense that you know you're getting cool movies versus a case of like everything has to be connected but right. it's still the weirdest thing is you know henry cavill is superman because I've realized, especially in recent times, Man of Steel has become one of those movies where a lot of people's opinion towards it has shifted. Well, initially, mm-hmm. it was like when, when it was released, a lot of people were like, yeah, that was cool. And, you know, uh, but I don't know. It's not necessarily my Superman or how I see Superman, whatever. It shifted mm-hmm. a lot to everybody saying, you know, Man of Steel is one of those underrated movies. Yeah. And what do you think about that? I mean, first of all, what is your opinion on Man of Steel? I, I think I had the exact same approach. When I first watched it, I was sort of, eh. Um, and then slowly but surely, you know, Cavill, I think he he managed to like, I don't know, have that presence. He, he's a very kind of uh, dominant figure. He, he does feel like a Superman other than just his stature, like his his acting abilities, performance that he puts on. He's intimidating in a way, you know, yeah. uh, but in a good way. And, and he does feel like this this powerful being Whereas I think in the past, a lot of the Clark Kent Superman has been this kind of like little nerdy sort of you know, guy with like, it just happens to be super strong. Whereas, you know, he just, he oozes power. And I think what's happened is over time, people have gotten used to having him in all these movies. And now this is what Superman, the face of Superman now is. So going back and now accepting that already. uh, And I I watched Man of Steel not too long ago. I think uh, maybe a year ago. um, And I enjoyed it. Honestly, like I do think it's underrated and I think it's it's a solid film. No, I mean, I completely agree with you. I, I was one of the people who loved it when I watched it. And it's primarily for this reason. When I was growing up, I grew up uh, watching Christopher Reeve's Superman movies. And I watched yeah. uh, like a lot of the old um, cartoons like they were out there. And I always found Superman to be, to be quite frank with you, a bland superhero. Right. I just found it was like, oh, you know, it's all about good and, you know, doing what's right. And it's like, okay, that's cool. Those are great yeah. values. I, but I mean, he kind of felt a little bit like Hulk Hogan. You know, yeah. like it's like, you know, this he's almost like an unbelievable sort of character in a sense. Like you don't really yeah. believe a lot of it because there's nothing there. It's like, okay, he's super. 
the power, the only thing that, you know, always challenges effectively is it's kryptonite. Exactly, and you're yeah. kind of figuring out how to be the super powered being in a, in, in a world with humans. And I always found like, okay, but you know, it wasn't interesting. I didn't find his dynamic as interesting as something like Batman mm. who, you know, has no superpowers, but you know, he's been obviously affected by trauma and, you mm. know, tackling all the problems in Gotham City. I never found that to be a case of Superman. Like I thought it was, yeah. it was a cool superhero, like obviously, you know, it's, it's legendary, but I just never found him as to be an interesting superhero. Even like right. compared to like someone like Spider-Man, I always found Spider-Man way more interesting. Of course. But with Man of Steel, I found it was, it gave him a little bit of a vulnerability. It kind of like, mm. you know, it kind of put it in the real world. What would happen if a superpowered being actually arrived on Earth today? And yeah. it wouldn't be a case of like everybody, oh, wow, this person's going to save us. No, no, no. We've seen what people are really like. Yeah, people, it's cynical. Yeah, it's cynical. People have been like, no, 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 no. We can't have this alien making decisions for us. And it kind of flipped the script a little bit on it. And, mm. I, and I really enjoyed that approach. I thought it was it was brave. It was bold. Yeah. And it brought something else, you know, to it. And like, yeah, we can argue about him snapping Zod's neck and whatever. That was a right <laughs> decision. I thought it was one of those moments where it gave a character growth. And yes, it might not necessarily be like the comics, but you know what? At the end of the day, nobody reads any comics. You just go have a look at the sales figures. <laughs> so I don't know what anyone was complaining about. Yeah, I mean, they just, they see a certain version of the character and they latch onto it and they think that that's yeah. what it is. But yeah, I really love Man of Steel. But I have I think, to, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I think, I think the challenge with Superman is exactly that. He's, he's such a cookie cut hero in his story, his abilities, that it's about like, what can you do with him to make it a bit more three dimensional? Yeah. Um, because whenever you hear of like OP characters, they often get compared to Superman. He's just like the answer to all, like the one man shop, you know, one stop shop for, for like all your your super needs, you know, it kind of gets it done. But I think it's really important for people who tackle it, especially in today's like day and age where we it's expected for for characters or leading characters to have a little more like depth and complexity to them um and i think they, they did a good job on on starting that trend and i hope it continues that way no i completely agreed i mean he was the first sort of prototype for the superhero that that we all know like nowadays like you know it's somebody that's got the power flight the power of super strength speed and you know uh got a, a dual identity it's kind of like we've seen this replicated so many times across mm-hmm. so many different mediums so the, there is a necessity to kind of separate him. like yes he's the original character and we know that but what i think what happened with superman where the problem was and i mean this i think is just a general problem that happened with dc films is they rush to create a universe so quickly to like compete with the, the likes of the Avengers and everything mm-hmm. but they didn't give these characters a bit of breathing room I mean I, yeah. to be honest with you I think it's criminal the fact that we are going to be getting an Aquaman sequel before we get a Man of Steel 2 we are going to yeah, be going to get like a third Wonder Woman movie as well Wonder Woman who arrived after Man of Steel I mean Wonder Woman was 2017 Man of Steel was 2013 yeah. we're already going to have a third Wonder Woman movie probably in the next I'd say two years and we haven't <laughs> got a Man like- of Steel is that the equivalent of having an Ant-Man 3 before you have an Iron Man 2? Exactly, dude. But that's the point. So <laughs> the thing is, like, you know, you've got this character that started it off. And yes, he's been present. I mean, he obviously was a, a, a massive part of Batman versus Superman and obviously Justice League. But I think, you know, the whole Justice League fiasco just set everything on, on a different path. And I know there have been yeah. like, problems after, after Justice League, the arguments that, you know, he wanted more money and Warner Brothers wasn't budging. Okay. And... I mean, that's natural. I mean, let, let's be honest here. Like actors, they obviously want to look after themselves. I'm pretty certain yeah. the deal that he signed in 2013, you know, he's become a mega star since then. He's become, you know, obviously m- much more recognizable. You want more money, yeah. you want to be compensated for it. Yeah, I completely yeah. get that. But I wasn't too concerned about that because I always know like money deals, it's Hollywood. It always happens. They're always mm-hmm. negotiating. There's always problems with money. That, that was fine. Then there was something else that happened that, it kind of got me a little bit shook, to be honest. It okay. was the Superman that appeared in the CW and now that's Superman and Lois. Yes, yes. Because that was the first time I was like, oh, okay, hold on a second. Because generally speaking, I know Warner Brothers does not like having somebody playing, for example, Batman on a TV show and a Batman in film. Okay. And, the, and they didn't want to do a Superman either because they consider those two like really key characters. So they don't want to dilute it in, in a sense of like what's on screen. So they yeah. want to make sure that there's only one Batman there. There aren't two or anything like mm-hmm. that. But okay. I was like, all right, this is worrying me a bit. They're obviously giving a, it's a Superman show. It's big. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something out there. 
And then I also thought to myself, okay, wait, but the Flash movie is going to introduce Michael Keaton's Batman. We obviously got Robert uh, Pattinson's Batman and Ben yeah. Affleck's one. So I was like, all right, maybe there's nothing really to worry about because they, they're embracing the multiverse. They're saying, right. great, there can be several, you know, Batman out there. But the thing that has got me worried now, and I've mm. been thinking about it, is... Tell me. A, first of all, Henry Cavill has obviously, he's in The Witcher. We know that. Yes. The Witcher with yeah. all the... Uh, he, he's obviously been filming it and it obviously takes up a good chunk of his schedule. The Witcher's mm-hmm. doing really well. I presume after the second season, we are going to have a third season Greenlit. Yeah. There's a possibility that Henry Cavill will also be cast as James Bond, which it, it's, it's, it's one that's out there. I don't necessarily know if it will happen because Hollywood might look at it like, oh, well, he's too many iconic characters. It, it might yeah. be a hard sell. But there's a strong possibility. But... The point is this, is the recently announced, well, okay, recently announced, what we're going to say, probably February, March, is the the new Superman movie that's being done at DC, that's being produced by J.J. Abrahams. Yes, yeah, I heard I heard whispers of this. Yes, and it's got uh, Tony Hussey uh, Coates basically writing it as well. Very famous writer, has done some cool stuff as well for Captain America, and he's done quite a lot of stuff, even a Black Panther series, so really great writer. Sick. But yeah. it's going to be... Uh, completely a brand new Superman. Now, obviously, oh. we're not sure. I mean, it's it's an early development. They, they're, they're not announced if it's part of the DCEU. We don't know if it will be about Clark Kent or will be about another Superman. No one knows, really. Yeah. But it is worrisome for one reason, because they're announcing another Superman movie again before they announce Man of Steel 2, effectively. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, is Man of Steel 2 guaranteed or? No, no, it's, it's not guaranteed at all. There's, there's no talk of it. I mean, Warner Brothers last time I said they have no plans for Man of Steel 2 or whatever. Henry Cavill yeah. says that, you know, the cape is still in his closet, that, you know, he's still Superman. So, like, there's just no real communication there. But I strongly believe that this is it. This is the end because they're mm-hmm. announcing a new Superman film. And this is the same thing, which is like when when they announced that, you know, Ben Affleck was, was not going to be part of um, you know he wasn't going to do the Batman movie anymore well when Matt Reeves was going to be and then they announced there was a new actor it was obviously Robert Pattinson and people were really saying well if there's going to be a Batman movie that he's not going to be a part of it chances are he's also he wants out yeah because you don't want to dilute especially characters like like this like I can kind of understand you know this whole multiverse sort of approach and maybe they you know are putting the eggs in several baskets but I just don't see the Man of Steel 2 happening I don't see Henry Cavill continue. I mean, there's, there's rumors that he might be popping up in Black Adam. Okay. Or, or I wonder if he would also pop up in Suicide Squad. Wasn't there a, a slight mention of that? Well, that's, that was the other thing I was actually going to get to. Because oh, sorry. I'm jumping ahead. No, no, no. It's fine. But in the Suicide Squad, the latest trailer, like Bloodsport, which is um, obviously uh, Idris Elba's uh, character. Yeah. It basically gets mentioned that, you know, he got locked up because he put Superman in ICU with a crypt, like a kryptonite bullet. Okay. And I found that that was actually like a bit of a dig at Superman. Because first of yeah. all... Let's be honest here. Okay, Bloodsport is pretty much a dead shot ripoff for like for yeah. the Suicide Squad. In the sense of it, you can <laughs> see you can see he's taking that place. I know that they were considering doing Idris Elba as blood, as sorry as Deadshot because Will Smith was unavailable to shoot the movie, yeah. and then they decided well they've got a good relationship, but you know with Warner Brothers and and Will, so they decided okay we're not going to touch that character. He might return in the future, so they decided okay yeah. cool we'll include him as Bloodsport. But dude, who the hell is Bloodsport? Who cares? Uh. <laughs> and now you literally are giving this dude like a backstory that he put Superman in hospital in ICU. You're taking one of the most powerful beings in yeah. the universe yeah. and you're basically dropping him to and you're nerfing him, yeah, to like uh, to like a D-list character, dude. Not even not even a C list, a B list character, like a D-list character. Yeah. Go look at any comics, go look at go read the comics. Bloodsport isn't like an A-lister at all. And, I, mm. and you kind of say to yourself, well, okay. So in all these movies you've had, Superman basically gets killed by Darkseid. Yeah. It, oh, not Darkseid, sorry. He gets killed by, um, what's his name again? Doomsday. Doomsday, He gets, yes. gets killed by Doomsday. Um, then he comes back. He pretty much, like in the starter cut, you know, beats the crap out of Steppenwolf. Basically, you know, scares the crap out of Darkseid. And you yeah. have this jobber, like, shoot him with a kryptonite bullet and put him in ICU. <laughs> it's like, okay, I get it. The Suicide Squad is supposed to be a little bit funny, I guess, you know, and James Gunn has got a good sense of humor on him. But it's a massive character. It's like, you know, you kind of look at that. It's like, it's a little bit disrespectful to the character, to yeah. be honest. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm just seeing it as like, this is this is the opportunity now where they're going to start phasing him out. 
Mm. And it's, it's a reboot that's coming. I think the Flash movie is going to obviously affect all the timelines and show how e- everything can be connected. And I strongly believe that this is going to be one of those cases. Henry Cavill's gone. Yeah, and you know what? I think, obviously, I mean, Twitter is Twitter, right? People will, will talk. But I mean, I've seen all kinds of rumors running around. Like, I mean, there was even a bit of noise made three days ago where there's this, I don't know if you saw it, there's a big... Uh, a poster like a big billboard and I don't know if it's on the Warner lot where you've got these like slots basically it's like a little uh, multi-slot and you've got all these little characters in there so they had like the Harry Potter characters and then they had um, the DC characters so you had Aquaman uh, Wonder Woman Batman Superman and um, Harley Quinn right yeah for all of those characters they used the current iterations except Batman and Superman, in which they chose to use the uh, Tim Burton and then the older uh, versions. Oh, so yeah. they didn't. They didn't put uh, um, uh, Ben Affleck and and uh, Henry Cavill uh, up but, on that poster, but they put everyone else. But uh, that was, I think, it's actually for DC fandom. I, I saw something briefly about it. To be honest, I didn't pay much attention to it because I know on Twitter, like everyone makes a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, look. I don't necessarily know in terms of marketing because, look, from a marketing perspective, I'd understand why they'd want to promote certain things. For example, if if this is for DC fandom, which if I'm not mistaken, it is, it makes sense you want to promote all the stuff coming out now, which is effectively, you know, Wonder Woman 1984 came out last year. So you obviously still want to have some focus on it. We're probably going to have an interview with uh, with with uh, the actress and obviously the director about you know the third movie probably appearing they're probably going to announce some news about it. Same time, Aquaman two's like it's been announced, it's in production. We know that's going to happen. You also know the Flash is coming. You know that's that's said. Michael Keaton's Batman is obviously playing a massive part in uh, well, uh, yes in the, the Flash CW. Movie. Yeah, no, 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 the Flash no, movie. No, yeah, the Flash movie. So oh, Michael okay. Keaton. Yeah. So he's he's coming. So obviously you know that. And Superman, I think it's like, you know, you don't really know exactly what's happening. So maybe it's a legacy sort of character. Maybe they decided that sort of approach. I'm not sure. Or, but, or is it a jab? <laughs> it could be. I mean, look, <laughs> anything's possible. I mean, we've seen a Warner can be petty. We've, we've noticed that before, like with certain things. I mean, uh, we've seen all the drama of Justice League, the Snyder Cuts. But I just find, to be honest with you, like, and I mean, it's an impression I've gotten since, you know, the, the real Justice League came out. Yes. They never wanted to announce the numbers of the movie or how well it did. Like, mm. we just never got that. Warner was not really interested in supporting the movie. We've seen Zack Snyder admitted that they were like, they, they felt almost disgruntled, like they got strong-armed into, into doing this movie. Yeah. And, I mean, personally, like, judging by the independent numbers which I've seen, because there have been several outlets in several of these places that reach out with, you know, you know figures, especially uh, internationally, like, they can show you how many times the movie has been downloaded from, like, the Play Store or, yes. you know, like all those places it's available. Yeah. It did really well. I mean, it was a number one movie for several weeks. The fact is, I mean, even in the UK the other day, it got released, I think, on, on digital, like, of- officially that you can buy the copy or something. I don't know. There was something released recently or it was a steel yeah. book or something like that. I, don't, I can't remember exactly what it was. But it was also still the top 10 movies released at that time. And I'm thinking, wow, okay, that yeah. movie was released in March. We're in June already. That's like three months mm-hmm. ago. So... I think it was super successful. Obviously, it is on a streaming platform. It wasn't the cinema. But, and we obviously can understand that it's hard to judge and gauge interest in terms of that because, right. you know, obviously getting people back. But I think the movie did really well with the global audience. People were excited. I mean, I've never seen personally, like even with Fortress, a movie being released. And normally we know overseas, you know, sometimes movies get released there and they don't give a crap about us. You know, like yeah. two, two weeks later, oh, you get the movie when you get the movie. <laughs> and I saw more hype and more people contacting us saying, do you know where we can get the Snyder Cut from legally? Like yeah, people wanted yeah. to support it. And I was like, for the first time, I was like, that's actually pretty cool. You know, normally, I mean, most audiences would be like, ah, we, we're just going to torrent it then if we can't find it. Yeah, people exactly. were like really interested in supporting and getting behind, you know, Snyder's vision. And I th- personally, I thought that was a really cool mo- a cool moment, especially in fandom. I yeah. was like, this is great. This is what I love to see. Yeah. But th- the lack of a reaction towards it by Warner Brothers and the lack of one. Oh, it was nothing. It was just silence. Yeah. I think they want to move on. And that's this is why I think Henry Cavill, they consider him part of the old guard as well. And they're yeah. like, yeah, we want to move away from that Superman and do something completely different. Mm, that makes sense. I mean, with the, the, the rebooted Superman, I mean, because we we've got Matt Reeves' Batman, right? Yeah. Um, would you want to see Cavill or would you want to see someone else? 
Well, it's going to be a reboot, so obviously they. I don't see them having Cavill coming back. Yeah, it doesn't um, really make sense. It doesn't make sense. I mean, they haven't announced it. And to be honest with you, like with a project of this magnitude, if they wanted Cavill back, they would have used his name to sell it. So yeah. it would have been a case of like, oh, we got a Superman reboot project and you know what, Superman's coming back, but Henry Cavill's going to be in it. You know, sort yeah. of thing. Like they would have done something to that to that extent. I think that would have been yeah. what they would have done because it would have sold the movie. It would have got people hyped. It would have like you know been like, wow, this is cool. Henry Cavill's still Superman. The, the fact that they avoided his name, the fact yeah. that they avoided it is like it is concerning. At the same time, though, I mean, I do also know how these projects pan out. Sometimes things get announced and they never go anywhere, which is also a possibility. Yep. So, but man, I, I, I'll be honest. Like from our side, I think he's gone. I really do think that th- this is it. He's he's moved on, yeah. and they obviously can't come to agreement. If anything, the only saving grace I can think of, because I mean, there were some rumors like it was a few months ago, I think, about him possibly becoming a character that pops up, not necessarily in his own movie, but like you mm. know, occasionally, like for example, in Black Adam, he would pop yeah. up for a fight or something like that. And I know it's a possibility because the Rock's agent which is his ex-wife, um, is also um, Cavill's <laughs> agent. Yeah. So, and um, they've got a really good relationship. So I know that that's a possibility that that's always open. But at the same time, like, you know, if Warner Brothers wants to move on, they yeah. might be like, ah, you know what? Sorry, man, you've had your time in the sun yeah. and that's it. You're done. <laughs> and I, I don't know, but I, look, for me, like I said, I would love to see him continue, but the, I think this reboot like is definitely the the death knell here. Mm. Like that's the way I, I, I think. I think. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think like the Snyderverse is kind of phasing out. Like you said, like I mean, for the most part, it's just, otherwise it's a bit disjointed and all over the place. Um, unless they just want to use the Flash to make everything make sense. I think so. The- I mean, look, it's it's a very precarious situation that they're in because. On one hand, you've got certain elements. So you've got the likes of Gal Gadot and you've got Jason Momoa and you've got Ezra Miller. They yeah. all got like projects coming. So you know that that's settled, all right? But you, it's hard to avoid like the conversation around it. Like what, what happens then to, you know, Ben Affleck's Batman? What happens to mm-hmm. Henry Cavill's Superman? So, and then obviously they've announced all these other projects. So you basically say, okay, you got the Joker. Now the Joker was supposed to be a standalone movie. That was yes. the whole purpose of it. Like, it's not supposed to be connected to anything else. It's supposed to be no. DC Black, whatever it was called. Yes. It did so well, they're like, we need to make another one. Okay, now you make another one, now it's a franchise. Yeah. So now, now it's a franchise. How does that connect to what you're doing, you know, in the other movies? You've and got, it, obviously, uh, Pattinson's Batman as well. Yes. How does that connect to what's happening there as well? Because you need to address it at some point. Because suddenly you've got one Joker running around um, on like, you know, the, the main DC universe, the DCEU. Then you've got another Joker yes. running around in Joaquin Phoenix's and is inevitably going to be a Joker for Pattinson's Batman. It's, so it's messy, three, dude. Ugh. Exactly. So you've got so like almost messy. like three different worlds running around there. So my... My thinking here is that because especially if they're going to introduce, you know, Keaton's Batman, what they're going to do is it's going to be a, like a loose sort of flashpoint story where he's going to mess up the timeline, but universes or different parallel universes are going to combine into one. Yeah. And yeah. that's how you might bring, you know, like something will be impacted, but they'll be like, okay, this is how it is now. So there's only like, yeah. there's this one Batman from the future, whatever, but there's another one here. This is what happened to Ben Affleck's one. Mm. And they're, they're going to kind of combine things because I agree with you. It just, it doesn't make sense. Like where do those other characters go? You can continue making yeah. like Aquaman movies and Wonder Woman movies, but I know at some point they're going to want another Justice League. They're going to want another yeah. crack at it. Yeah, yeah, and- I think they're going to have to consolidate in some way that makes sense. I just hope they don't like shoehorn it, you know, I hope, it, I hope it's done well because it's a lot of complicated pieces to juggle sort of. No, absolutely. And I mean, look, I'll be I'll be the first person to say I'm not a huge fan of multiverse sort of storylines and stuff like that because I find it's a very cheap way to address problems that yeah. you, know, you have. Yeah. You know, you've written yourself into a corner like, and this is the thing, and it's happened in the comics like so many times. That's why DC, there's always a joke. Every time the word crisis comes up, they turn it into an event. Every time there's yeah. a crisis, identity right. crisis. It's, it's, a, it's a writing yeah. crisis. It's a writing crisis. That's, that's literally what, what it is. is. Because you painted yourself into a corner. You've made too many decisions, editorial decisions, and now you need to reverse. So the only way you're going to do that is by creating an event that like, you know, suddenly, you know, changes the multiverse or something. Oh, look, everything is explained now. You know, then, you know, inevitably 10 years later, you need another reboot. Oh, boom, another crisis happens. 
let's do this. I mean, Marvel's also doing the same thing. I mean, we know that the Doctor Strange um, uh, the movie as well is coming out and also the new Spider-Man 3 is going to have multiverse elements in it. So Marvel might also be doing something similar. It could also be the way that Marvel's bringing the X-Men. I've already thought about it myself, to be honest, because if you're bringing it across like Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool, yeah. wouldn't it make sense to kind of bring the X-Men too? Like the people who play yeah. the X-Men? It would make sense Why because not? you really yeah. know them. So I'm still thinking that that could be a, a scenario. I'm not entirely sure, but it's a way to kind of combine all these these things. And I think mm. DC's also doing it. Like I said, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of it, but if it's done properly, yeah. I, I can accept it. I can get behind. But I, I just do think there's there's a lot of unnecessary retconning happening here, which mm. it could have just been like avoided altogether. I agree. I agree 100%. I think DC for me has always been touch and go. Uh, well, the DCEU at the moment. Um, this is why I'm, I'm pouring my excitement into the the new Batman animated film, uh, Long Halloween, which you've already seen. I'm quite jealous, yeah, but I'll, yeah. I'll get my chance. Uh, but yeah, no, look, I'm not I'm not too pessimistic either. Like, I'll just relax and, and, and see what unfolds. But I agree with you. I think Cavill's time may be done. Let's hope there's some cameos. Let's hope we're wrong. Um, I would love to see him in something like Black Adam. Um, yeah. Yeah. Look, like, like you said, I think, you know, you you've basically said what a lot of other fans have been saying about DC movies. And it's just, I think the inconsistency and, you know, to be honest, like I love, I love the DC like films. I love the Marvel films. You know, you'll hear it from me. I'm a fan. I'm just a fan of comic book characters and comic book movies. I really love them. I'll watch them all. Like regardless of how crap they are, I'll watch them all (laughs) and I'll I'll find something to to enjoy about it. Yeah. But I do tend to agree. and And I think the problem at DC is actually Warner brothers as a studio because You know, sometimes when you make a decision, like it's supposed to be a long-term decision, like a DCEU, Mm. it's a long-term decision. It's a long-term payoff. Uh, Sometimes you are going to have missteps along the way. You are going to have something that doesn't work as well as you thought it might. But I find that the one is is, is too reactionary to something. It's like something happened. I need to, you know, it's exactly that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, It's reactionary. And I think that's nail on the head. And I think that that's the problem. It's like, instead of letting it happen or following in a certain direction, doing certain things, like like we said, you know, the multiverse, why couldn't the Snyderverse just exist as it is? Yeah. If you carry on doing your stuff, give give Zack Snyder whatever he wants to do there. You still have the other stuff coming. Eventually when Snyder decides, ah, I'm out, I'm tapping out. Cool. Then we bring everything else full circle. We, we kind of do it. But you could still have that. You know, you could still have, you know, those different universes. I mean, we've got to see W characters and you've got the characters on the screen. It's like, you know, people are smart enough to know which one's which. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing. It's like, you know, we, we kind of looking at it. And, and you know, in the case of Cavill, I, I would love to see that. But I, I think that this is, is beyond it. I, I, I believe that now this is actually like, you know, business decision. He's probably been waiting around for, you know, Warner Brothers to make a decision and to say to him, okay, cool, suit up. You know, we're going to go yeah. film. And, and he's decided, you know, I want to do other projects. I mean, he's become a pretty big name. I mean, he's yeah. like some Mission Impossible, The Witcher. I mean, he's even done that, you know, the Holmes as well. So he's, yes. he's branching out. He's doing a lot of stuff. And I strongly believe with him, you know, hanging on to something like Superman and just waiting until they decide to do something. You know, it's not it's not going to happen all the time. And like, he needs to make decisions for his own career. As much as I love to see him play Superman again, you know, he can't also sit around waiting until Warner Brothers gets, you know, no, of gets course, it together. of course. But I mean, like, I, I love him as an actor, you know, and I thought his portrayal of Geralt was exceptional. And also because I think he was just so excited to, to play the role in The Witcher. Um, so in stuff like that, and I, I'm doubtless that he'll have many more huge roles. I'm, I'm not too sad. It's not like the end of, of Cavill's career or anything. No, absolutely. Um, but I just yeah, think it's but sad. it might just be the caped, caped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's sad for fans in a way. You know, the, the thing is like, you know, you always end up feeling robbed in a way. It's, it's like, for example, you know, you look at uh, what Christopher Nolan did with his trilogy. It wrapped it up nicely. Mm-hmm. You saw, uh, you know, a beginning and you saw an end to the character, you know, to yeah. that universe. You saw the beginning and end. It was done in a trilogy. And that was it. You know, it was done. And it whilst yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, it'd be really cool. You know, you know, Christian Bale's Batman popped up in the Flash movie as well. It's done. Mm-hmm. You can accept it. It's got a definitive end to it. But when I it th- kind of... I think that's a fair point. Yeah, you're right. I think that's a fair point is, is when it's left open-ended like that, it's not... Yeah, it's like you know, satisfactory. it's like you have a favorite TV show, and it ends on a cliffhanger, and then they cancel it. You know, you kind of yeah. feel like, but no, it's kind what, of what bit happens? Of, bit of taste. 
like, you know, what happens? You know, like, what happened? You know, what are we going to do here? So, yeah. unless, you know, they're, they're going to bring him back, you know, just to, to get rid of him in the Flash movie, like, you know, maybe in some weird way or something to do is like maybe he's having a, like you know a, a secret cameo in it we, we never know yeah. and it could be filming something just so they can move on but at the same time I mean it is Superman it's one of the most iconic heroes of all time I mean it, yeah he'll persist but yeah Cavill's time sorry folks I think it's I think it's and you know what you made a good point because that's how I felt about so Andrew Garfield is not my favorite Spider-Man for example heresy heresy but but, but I did think I did feel sad that he didn't get a third movie to finish it up because they were yeah. clearly setting up Sinister Six and I was like he should have been able to finish it and that's I felt he got robbed a little bit there um, but, th- but this is why all the fans got robbed and stuff so this, this is yeah but this is why shared universes only work initially when you actually have like a plan like ma- mapped out like for example a 10 year plan like for example Robert Downey Jr. had a certain amount of movies and he was going to make it gets to a certain point like even after I think it was Iron Man 3 and the first Avengers yes. there was like a certain plan that you could see that they could have phased the character out if they needed to or he could continue yeah. so you could kind of like you know almost like push him aside for a while like you, you, if you if we, they, they don't agree to come back or carry on without it and this is where I think it's, it's sometimes better to have trilogies versus having you know I, like you, you never know when it's going to end it's never ending yes. like a cinematic universe because that way you can best say okay I've got you for three movies this is the plan for three movies that we're going to do uh, at the end of the third one you know we're going to have you you know go away you know, right off into the sunset for a while it might not necessarily be it but it can give you a break and we can negotiate terms again and that's exactly. the way you do it not this thing where it's like you know oh it's going to continue forever then like two, two movies down the line everything changes and you don't even know if you have your own solo film anymore you don't <laughs> And that doesn't work. So, like I said, trilogy sometimes are like better versus these like never-ending like cinematic universes because you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, even even for example, we can argue about Star Wars to a certain extent as well. Star Wars, the last three movies, I know a lot of people have you know differing opinions about it, and a lot of people didn't like them and they felt they yeah. were inferior. But the point is this. I know that the storyline wasn't consistent from the first movie to the last. They hadn't planned, but you knew you had those actors for three movies. So you knew by the time you get to the end of the third movie, something needs to happen. Like, because, you know, they're going to go away. They're going to do other stuff. So you can't just leave it open-ended. So there was a conclusion to it. It might not be the conclusion you wanted. Yeah. But there was a conclusion to the character. But it was resolved. It was resolved. And at least you had that. You at least could close the book. Whether you enjoyed the book or not, the fact is you could close it. Exactly. But yeah, yeah, but like I said, but yeah, man, thanks a lot. It's been really great chatting. It's, I mean, it is a bit of a depressing topic, but I mean, since we're both <laughs> fans, but it's been cool chatting about it. I mean, I hope that everyone else you know, that's out there has also got some input. It would be really cool to hear everyone's opinion. I mean, I'm really, like I said, you know, initially, we don't have any insights in terms of like that. Somebody's told us that he's done. This is all just us, you know, chatting about it. Yeah. But yeah, we, we'd love to hear your comments. You know, let us know what, what you think. If uh, if you think Henry Cavill's done, if you feel there's a glimmer of hope, if you think maybe even cameos would, would be a good thing. Just let us know in the comments. But yeah, until next time. Thank you, everyone.